Hello everyone and welcome to Celestial Invitational IMD2. With me is Kaldi. Those are not us on the screen, although I do recognize the middle Chinese caster Snoke. She is absolutely wonderful. Uh, very excited to have her being able to cast the Chinese uh, edition for the Chinese audience. And today we have the finals of the Celestial Invitational. Last four days were all the group stages. And we are finally getting to the last part of it. We're going to see who takes the largest share of that $25,000. And we have a stacked group today with Firebat, Jay Shot, Tom, Bra Rose, Eloise, Life Coach, Doc, and Kalento, as you can see on the screen there. Six of the eight players are invites. Two of them, Jay Shot and Bra Rose, managed to get out of their really difficult groups and make it through to this final eight Kaldi. yeah this is going to be absolutely an insane day here we have firebat the actual champion going up against underdog jaysha someone who even not the the chinese people don't don't really know uh, then we have tom 60112 who's been dominating the past six months or so but is really looking to take this tournament here going up against braros who beat ties convincingly and and took the uh I believe he took yeah the first place in the group there, and then we're looking oh. at uh, two yeah. stacked foreigner uh, pro versus pro. We have life coach versus Eloise, and then we have Colento versus Doc. And I mean, life coach versus Eloise or Colento versus Doc could be the final of any tournament. Right, Colento versus Doc is a huge match, and I am a bit confused here. I thought that Firebat versus Jaysha would be our first match, but it looks like we're looking at Dog's decks right away here. Going to be that uh, Patron Warrior plus the Face Hunter and the Dragon Priest there. Now, just a reminder, players are not allowed to change their decks, but they are allowed to change the order that they bring them in. As we do see, one of the commentators is that is one of the members of Celestial on the left side there. And indeed, it looks like we're having Kalento versus Dog right off the bat here. Basically, the biggest match of the first round, in my opinion. Uh, two huge so, uh, names here right away. And uh, yeah, it looks like we're going to be seeing Kalento's rogue. Uh, his oil... No, sorry. His uh, oil kind of rogue with the, uh, the Unearthed Raptor, as well as the aggressive Mech Shaman. And finally his uh, tempo mage there and uh yeah what do you think about this just right off the bat going with dog versus Kalento. i was getting ready to have the you know the chinese player narrative talking about how jay sean braros made it here but we're gonna start off with two westerners well it seems like we've, we're saving the best for first here uh, a crazy matchup coming up i mean Kalento with his raptor slash control rogue hybrid his agro shaman and his tempo mage but dog however has been pulling out an anti-aggro lineup and it's kind of crazy to call face hunter anti-aggro but that's the that's the uh, reality we're living in now i mean face hunter double explosive trap double unleash the hounds if you're going to be attacking a face hunter with with a low low health minions you're gonna have a very bad time so i think it's gonna be very rough here <clears throat> i mean colento is a magician he will pull out all the stops here so a crazy matchup coming up for uh our, our first one here, and I'm really excited about it. Yeah, I, I wasn't really, you know, prepared for this matchup right away, but looks like we're going to be having that. One thing I did want to talk about, and one thing we are going to be talking about throughout this tournament, is the order in which they bring their decks. Remember, guys, they have to bring all nine classes. So whatever decks they win with in this first round, they are not allowed to play that until the end. It's basically like a super conquest. You have to win once with every single deck the entire way throughout the finals. And uh, just the biggest thing here is that... You know, just to see where they put the Shaman deck, just to be blunt here. Shaman has not prepared, has not performed well, excuse me, in this tournament. And uh, obviously it's been one of the weaker decks thus far uh, up until this date in the last few months. Obviously being a little bit better having the aggro Shaman uh, come out from Raynet and people like Luffy. But again, even those decks, even those aggro shaman decks, which have performed well on the ladder, not doing too well in this tournament. And uh, just right off the bat, Kalento has a shaman in his first lineup. One strategy that we saw, Kaldi, in uh, the qualifiers to this event was that we had uh, the Chinese players decide to save shaman for the finals, kind of... Uh, you know, thinking that if their opponent had made it to the finals, they probably would not have the shaman up until the finals either. I think it could also be the the old old Chinese modesty. You know, they maybe assume that they are 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 not going to get, get to the finals. But I mean, I talked about it when uh, Kanto was playing his group. He doesn't care who he's going to face. He's going to win every single match and and go to the finals. I mean, Rogue and Xiaoman here in the first best of uh, best of five. I mean, that just tells tells us he is looking to win the final, not to win the round of eight. Uh, and I think on top of it, Mage is not probably. 
at least Colanto isn't really known for his mage. He's known for his priest, known for his warrior, known for his druid. But uh, yeah, I can't say uh, uh, Colanto is really known for his mage. So I feel like Colanto is probably bringing his weakest classes now to have a better chance later on. And Dog just seems to be going middle of the way. I kind of like the idea of of, uh, of Dog. I think he may be copying a bit what Tyus was doing. So Tyus was looking at it as uh, bringing three classes that worked well together. That was his, his strategy. So he had, for example, uh, Freeze Mage and Dragon Priest and another anti-aggro deck. Uh, and then in the last game he had Druid and Paladin, which are kind of, you know, brawny decks that are, are, are meant to force a win early and, and just kind of punch through on, on power alone. So you could beat a control deck three times versus the first uh, lineup that he had. The anti-aggro one could just... Yeah, patron uh, dragon priest and, and freeze could just demolish uh, uh, an aggro deck three times over. So it seems like Dog may be copying the lip at bringing his anti aggro lineup here. Right, right. And uh, we we talked to Dog yesterday in that interview. He said it might have been a slight mistake to bring that warrior, to bring the patron warrior. He has admitted that it hasn't been performing too well, too well lately. Excuse me. And uh, just looking at these lineups one more time, I mean, Clento, like you said, he just, you know, has no fear. He, he wants to just win it all or maybe, you know, fall here, whichever it uh, may be. He doesn't really care about second place or, you know, third and fourth place finish. He wants to win the entire tournament. So going with maybe a bit of a weaker lineup in this first match, it looks like Dog going the exact opposite approach, going with that Shaman in the finals. Now, we do have three players who have brought Shaman, who have decided to order their lineup in such a way that Shaman is in the finals if they do make it there. And that is Dog and our two Chinese qualifiers, Jay Shaw and Braro. So again, those players having experienced the qualifiers up to this event, uh, keep in mind guys, those qualifiers were the exact same format as the finals that you're about to see. And in their experience, they found success putting the Shaman for last, thinking that anyone who put Shaman before them was probably going to lose anyway, and they were thinking that they could brave the Shaman in the finals if their opponent also had that Shaman. So it uh, looks like Dog going with a pretty similar strategy, potentially. Maybe he has a different feeling about the, the matter, but uh, in any case, it's going to be a bit of a weaker lineup for Kalento in this first match, and that could give Dog the edge. I guess the dog briefly about why we're having uh, Colento versus Daga first. Apparently, Firebutt was a little bit late, and he's going to be playing the fourth match of the day. So we're going to have uh, Colento versus Daga first, and we're going to be moving on to uh, Braros versus Tom, then Eloise versus Life Coach, and then ending off with Firebutt versus Jacia. But yeah, Firebutt is has a little bit of reputation in the Western scene for you know. Uh, not being the the biggest morning person, you know, <laughs> he he's known for showing up in his pajamas, his uh, his Batman pajamas, and and that's just sort of you know when when a lot of people are, like making notes and getting ready and like you know about to play on 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 TV and like you know scouting decks and talking to the teammates, he just kind of strolls in, you know, like uh, with some coffee and and in his <laughs> pajamas and like just plays on stage and wins, and that's just kind of Firebats character, so a very relaxed player who, you know, doesn't take everything too seriously, but it seems to win regardless. Right, I think uh, in the actual matches, he feels like he has enough, you know, mechanics and technique and just being able to play the matches themselves, that he's pretty confident in that scenario and puts basically all the work into the preparation for the tournament, you know, what, what decks to bring and scouting at the meta. So on the actual day of the event, you know, not going to be that... Uh, you know, concern about how his play is going to be. In any case, we are going to be getting into that first match. It is Dog versus Kalento. We're going to be having Firebat later on in the day. And it's going to be starting off with that Face Hunter versus the Oil Rogue of Kalento that has the Unearthed Raptors in it. We do see the Heal Bot, and yeah, it looks like he is going to keep it. That is a key card to staying alive in this matchup. Absolutely, here. Um, but yeah, I think. Dog may be looking good here in, in this first match. I mean, ooh, that is a very expensive hand from Colento. It's a good thing that he has that prep, however, because that prep will allow him to potentially clear some sort of board. But Dog not even going to to uh, commit any, anything else to the board. Obviously, we don't see anything in his hand. But uh, Colento kind of ironically wanted to see more on the board there to get value out of his fan. Yeah, I mean, people have been talking about if he has a coin, there's little reason not to keep the prep. Uh, because you so often end up having four or five cards in the in the late game, and, and as you do have sprint, for example. Uh, so just getting those those cards out earlier is really what you need. But there's no four of that's the big thing for Colanto. He will need to wait until turn four at least to get anything out of them on the board. 
Yeah, exactly. And uh, despite, again, having that prep and having that heal bot to be able to sustain him, he doesn't really have anything going until turn 4, like you mentioned. But uh, on the other hand, Dog has a pretty slow start as well, not willing to commit to that Arcane Golem and give his opponent more mana. And you can see why Klento being able to play, you know, one of his fire drops here as well as, you know, speed into the following fire drop would be pretty devastating, but is able to pick up that SI7 agent even though he's throwing it on the board without the combo, it's probably got to be a sigh of relief a bit for Kalento here. Yeah, I think without the heal bot, this would be looking extremely rough, but the, the bow is critical here. We'll get him 6 damage. Uh, so we're looking at 26 probably being the total amount of life that Kalento will have with his heal bot. Uh, it looks like it would take Ooh. him 4 or 5 turns, but he's going for the arcane goal right off the bat here. Wow, very interesting. Uh, decides he wants to get something on the board. He could have maybe gone for that Eagle Horn bow, but obviously wouldn't be able to pair anything with it like he would with this Abusive Sergeant. So, wants to get that extra 2 damage in right away. And Kalento, not going to commit to the heal bot yet, realizing that at 5 mana, Dog isn't going to be able to kill him. So, going to go for, I would say, a slightly greedy play, but a reasonable play with the Azure Drake, especially because he has that prep fan. Just clears the board, and now Kalento... I dare say, looking at a pretty good spot, despite, you know, the burst from Dog's hand, I mean, this could turn into a race here. Absolutely. We'll see the heal bot coming down on the next turn, but from there, where does it actually go? I mean, if you look at the hero power now, it's... it's how, how much is that? We're looking at 15 damage. Can God, Dog really actually carry that through? It will be really, really rough. I mean, right. he has the kill command quick shot, but it, it might take three turns. I, right, right. Uh, with that heal bot coming down for Kalento, this is going to be a very close game. Uh, Kalento coming up back up to 15 health here, can't wait any longer. Uh, doesn't have any way to to get any other cards out onto the field, so just going to be the 7 damage right here. Looks like he's going to coin into his hero power so that he can get something working next turn. Doesn't want to float any mana at all, and uh, I think he's not going to attack. Going to, yeah, going to save it because he has that Deadly Poison and Blade Flurry going to maximize his damage the following turn, and does does Clinto have lethal the next turn? He has 10 damage. He does, yeah. It's wow. 90 exactly. Wow. So, yeah, 10 damage on the field as far as minions is concerned. Then he has the 7 from the Deadly Poison Blade Flurry as well as the SI7 agent. So, Dog, if he's a bit worried about his own life total, he needs to start clearing right now, which is not what you want to be doing as a face hunter. Yeah, no question. I mean, the Arcane Golem just opened up so many possibilities for Kurlento, gave him that three extra, uh, it's, been, yeah, it's been two extra mana now, you could, but he could also save the coin when he was going for that uh, Azure Drake and, and was able to get the hero power rolling right now. He wouldn't have had lethal without, uh, if Dog had, hadn't gone for the Arcane Golem, then Kalento wouldn't have had lethal, so, okay, it did give Dog more damage that one turn, but also gave Kalento lethal a turn earlier, so it took away a whole turn for Dog. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, if, if Kalento takes this one out, it's looking pretty good for him. Yeah, absolutely. Looks like Dog is going to kill command something. We'll see if it's a minion or not. Uh, going to be going to the face, so yeah, I mean, I assume Kalento's not going to miss this, so that's probably going to be game one going to Kalento here, and uh, Dog got to be kicking himself for giving his opponent that early mana. Absolutely. It's a tough call, though. I mean, often, I mean, without the heal, but there would have been no chance, and Without the heal, but the Arcane Golem is the right call, no question about it. Uh, but yeah, Kalento taking game number one. I mean, then he'll have the uh, the Mech Agro Shaman, I think, which will probably be the, uh, the the most important point of this best of five. Can Kalento win with his Mech Shaman? But versus Dog playing that uh, Warrior that isn't he isn't really comfortable with, and Phase Hunter. He isn't really known for Phase Hunter. Uh, as well, so it'll be interesting to see how this pans out. Yeah, exactly. That kind of shows the difference between playing against a deck and actually using the deck yourself. Obviously, Dog, having gone against Face Hunter plenty of times, knows how to defend it, knows the options that Face Hunter has, but, you know, uh, piloting the deck yourself, it can be a bit tricky, especially in that situation where he was stuck between going for that Eagle Horn Bow or going for that Arcane Golem, and we saw in the end that Arcane Golem ended up biting him and, uh, you know, reversing the damage on him from Kalento. Uh, that said, you know, maybe going for the Eagle 
Eelhorn bow could have been too slow, maybe he would have lost that game regardless, but obviously going to be a difficult game for him to swallow. Uh, we are going to be going into game two, hopefully shortly here. Like you said, Kalenta with those two aggressive decks, the Shaman and the Mage. Uh, we will we see that he picks this Shaman, and uh, Dog is going to be going with that Priest, so pretty good matchup for Dog here. Yeah, it sure is. I mean, this is a mandatory win here for Dog. We had the same thing happen when Dog was playing against Tice, and in that case, Dog just drew completely dead, and it looks like something similar might be happening right now. Shadow with Death, Dragon King Sorcerers, and Sylvanas is not what he was looking for. He has six one drops and two two drops, or eight cards in total. He doesn't draw a single one. Yeah, that's pretty painful to look at. Kalento, on the other hand, does pick up some two drops. Let's see if he can top deck a one drop right here. That's not going to be it. It is technically a card that you can play for one mana, but not going to be Dennis in the face. I. Uh, assume right now. Finally picks up the uh, Cog Hammer one turn too late. That would have been an absolutely mind-blowing start with the uh, Cog Master into double Totem Golem, but uh, Dog spared a bit here. Let's see if we can get the view of his hand. I believe he had uh, a Dark Cultist in hand, do you remember? Yeah, Dark Cultist, Sylvana, Thriven King Sorceress, and Shadow of Death. Then obviously he will top deck two more cards now. He has the coin on top of it, but K got here with a double totem golem star. This is looking exactly like things were looking uh, when Dog was playing against Heiss. And then he did end up losing them. That ended up costing him the whole series. Right, yeah, losing that match was really painful for him. Looks like he's not going to coin out that Dark Cultist that we know is in his hand. Kalento going to take the board. This is a lot of pressure put on Dog. These minions, I mean, you can Shadow Word pain them, but other than that, you know, really difficult to get rid of them. They have a ton of health, and uh, let's see if Kalento keeps on the pressure, or uh, more likely, or more in tune with what is going on in this game, how he's going to do it. Uh, does he go for that Unbound Elemental? Looks like he's going to reach for the Power Mace. Doesn't have any mechs in hand at the moment, but that Dark Cultist is pretty threatening with its ability to make, basically make another minion get out of range of being killed. I mean, yeah, Colento is known for his Priest, so he knows exactly the power of the Dark Cultist. And with that dead, I mean, that, there's nothing stopping Colento from just demolishing everything here. It'll be very important to see what exactly he gets, but he ends up getting that rock, but that's perfect here. There's no max, sadly, for him, but, I mean, is he just going to possibly ignore it? I think... Yeah, it looks like he's going to take it out. Bolt, yeah. yeah, he's going to over, overkill this by uh, th two, but uh, he's still going to be able to take it out with and keep his board alive here. Still a pretty resilient board with, you know, the 3-4 Totem Golden and 3-5 uh, Unbound Elemental, which could grow, uh, obviously, with that Doom Hammer in hand. Uh, one funny interaction would have been if uh, Kalento played the Rock Biter and then switched to the Doom Hammer and had a 6 attack plus a 5 attack. Obviously didn't have the mana for that, but uh, that would have been pretty funny to see. In any case, we finally see Dog come out with his Dragonkin Sorcerer. And uh, he played the Twilight Whelp first, which means it's still unknown to Kalento whether Dog has any more dragons in hand. That could be the only dragon in hand, that Dragonkin Sorcerer. But looks like Kalento going to commit to this uh, Doom Hammer, and looks like everything is going to face. Kalento really putting on the pressure and making Dog respond here. We do see that Do Kalento essentially has, you know, 10 damage coming from his hand, if you can include that Rock Biter. Well, you know, faces the place, and Kalento is embodying that absolutely. But I think the uh, key thing was the last turn when he did end up buffing his Unbound, saving the Rock Biter for now turn seven. He realized, okay, I'm gonna take one Overlord, but I can still play the Doom Hammer. I don't need to be using the Rock Biter right now, so I want to have lethal anyway. And I mean, this is just so unfortunate for Dog. Right. The main thing is is having that uh, having that. Those one drops ready, having those oh. worm crests rolling. Wow, Dog has an embarrassing mistake there. Doesn't even kill off the unbound elemental. Uh, just <laughs> miscalculates the damage and can't even take that out. I think it was even dead on board in that situation. So not going too well for Dog at the moment as Kalento takes a 2-0 lead in this series with that aggressive mech shaman just playing it very, very well, knowing when to trade, knowing when to put on the aggression and go to the face. And that's one of the weaknesses with the Dragon Priest. If you don't immediately grab board control, there's no, there's not too many comeback mechanics other than something like the Light Bomb and maybe the Holy Nova. And uh, in 
in particular, there's no huge heals, right? There's only the Holy Nova for him to be able to heal more than his, just his hero power. And in that instance, Kalento just had the amount of damage to be able to kill him, and Dog could do nothing that last turn. Absolutely, but I think to note here is, uh, I think he was looking rough anyhow, even without that last uh, misplay there. Right, he was dead anyway, Kalento no matter what he did, right, yeah. Yeah, but I think to note though is, you know, generally in the European scene, nothing happened before 3 or 4 p.m. Some people are streaming before 3 or 4 p.m., you know, but generally there's little to do. So the sleep schedule of the European pro is, is often, you know, waking up till 3 or 4 in the, in the uh, 3 or 4 a.m. here. And, and I mean, Colento, in his time zone, I believe it's 9.30, uh, but in Dog's time zone, it's... Uh, I believe it's 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 I think it's it's three thirty, so right. it's, it's extremely um... late or early for dog depending on how you assess it. But I think that may have an effect. We Actually, talked about dog just being absolutely gone here, and 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 Colento also he didn't sleep the the night uh, before he won his group convincingly. Uh, so yeah, that may be playing an effect on dog. Yeah, it looks like uh, Clento may have picked the wrong deck here, has the Druid, and we do see that the Mage is what he's supposed to be playing, so we could have a regame here. But uh, yeah, while we get this all sorted out, yeah, I want to talk about that again. Do you know if Dog lives on the east or west coast of, of the U.S.? Because obviously that makes a uh, that could be as much of a three as much as a three hour difference. I believe if he's living on the west coast, it is around. A uh, 1 a.m. or if he's on the east coast, it's around 4 a.m. Something around there. So it will be a big difference. Looks like we're gonna have a regame. And uh, yeah, in any case, it is kind of a strange time for Dog to be playing. Obviously, was able to get through yesterday, get through his group uh, pretty well. But uh, yeah, both players kind of in a weird time zone, especially for gamers. And uh, we will see what happens in this match if if Dog can come back. Obviously, he has you know that anti-aggro lineup, and we've seen crazier things before. We've seen reverse sweeps throughout this tournament, so I wouldn't be surprised at all if Dog is able to pull off this comeback. You know, question about that here. Uh, it'll be strange though to see if if the mage can pull through. I still feel like this is not over by any means. The uh, tempo mage versus, for example, the hunter. That'll just come down to the draw. I feel like. Yeah, now we see the scenario where the hunter has the coin. I feel like the hunter is actually favored when he has the coin. Uh, and that's not as much about having the coin himself. It's more about denying the coin right. from the uh, mage. But that hand from Kalento is really, really good. Yeah, the hand from Kalento does have a lot of answers, but uh, not a lot of threats itself. So if Kalento has to sit there and basically just remove everything from dog turn after turn and doesn't get anything going him on his own terms, then, you know, maybe Dog can get that damage in. And uh, going to be able to play this Mad Scientist followed by the Wolf Rider next turn. Let's see if Kalento commits to killing this right now. Nope, going to go for the Arcan Intellect, playing a bit greedy, but uh, could pay off for him in the end, especially with that Flame Winker coming into hand with that Arcane Blast to, at its disposal. Yeah, this Flame Winker will be the key to his victory here if he's going to be taking this one. But I think Dog, you know, maybe thinking about the next game and the game after that here, but the arcane blast here will be just devastating. The main thing will be does he hit the wolf fighter, and if he does hit the wolf fighter and the abuse, this is looking like it's almost game over. Right, we will see where these pings land. The flame work is gonna go off, and hits Ooh. the wolf fighter, which is good. Doesn't get a perfect hit, but uh, pretty good. I think if you're Kalento, you will take that. Does a uh, you know, take off a lot of damage off of the board. Dog here in an interesting situation. Do you commit both minions to the board or do you start committing to having a hero power every single turn? Obviously that Flame Waker is a bit of an issue as well, so uh, you could take that out with Quick Shot, but then you're losing a lot of damage to face. What do you do here as the aggressive face hunter? I think you have to kill a Flame Waker. The, the amount of, of uh, removal that he gets through that, he doesn't kill a Flame Waker. Wow, okay. I think this may be a mistake. I mean, Right. The, it will be so easy for him to remove everything right right now. Yeah, as the tempo mage, you really like it when your flame waker is able to stick a turn and you're able to just start throwing those missiles everywhere. We do see that Colento has some options in hand with regard to being able to, you know, quote unquote, activate uh, this flame waker. Looks like he's gonna go ahead and take care of this the first half of uh, the Haunted Creeper and just start, you know, just dealing a lot of damage 
Uh, we might see actually two Frostbolts to the face potentially. Yeah, it's going to be that. Two Frostbolts to the face. Can he finish off this board? It's going to be pretty huge. Let's see where the pings go. Does get the oh, entire oh, board. Oh. Now nothing to take out this Flame Maker other than that quick shot. He could have, uh, speaking of dog, maybe gone, uh, you know, thrown a Spectral Spider in if he had that on the board and, you know, prevented the Flame Maker from ever attacking face. But looks like he's just going to go aggressive. And wow. he gets the Arcane Missiles on top of that. Wow, this is going to be just... <laughs> Kalento just favoring the damage. Not going to go with the Arcane Missiles first. Going to go with the Flame Cannon first just to make sure he gets that extra damage to face. And now we'll, we'll see what he goes for. He is going to attack in, and all of a sudden, even though Dog's been doing his best to go face, Kalento is in a heavy lead here as far as damage done to opponent. I think I kind of have to um, talk a bit about another line of play, which would be uh, attacking in, then going for the Ash Dragon, then the Arcane Missile, right. keeping the Flame Cannon. I feel like Ping and Flame Cannon is not as strong as Ash Dragon. Okay. I mean, technically, your, your uh, Hunter will be at 10 health, but you'll have an extra minion and an extra spell to roll that out. Right, right. And now he isn't dead, but I feel like it would have been another story here. Wow, so it looks like Clento... Is he going to go for it? He's going to go for it. This is about a 62% chance that Clento wins the game with these boom bots right here. Can he hit them? Four and one. That's going to be it perfectly for Clento. <laughs> and Dog right away is out of the tournament. Howdy, this is something that we were not expecting. Not at all. I mean, we're talking about this being the probably the closest match and the most exciting one here. With uh, two very established pros. I mean, Dark, not a, a pusher by any means, been dominating here, picked up by Team Liquidist. I mean, Colento made him look like a scrub here in this match. 3-0. <laughs> Right, I mean, just amazing play by Kalento there, realizing when to go aggressive, when to trade, just playing his matchup perfectly, you know, playing whether it's control or aggro or combo, Kalento knows how to play the decks. And on the other side, you know, Dog didn't play too badly, but a couple of things here and there, a couple of questionable, questionable lines of play with his face hunter, and that was the difference. Kalento takes it in a landslide, three games to zero. We've seen some three zeros, but it's mostly been comebacks when one person went two to zero up usually it's been you know either a reverse sweep or it goes to two two and the original person wins but we haven't seen many three zeros yet so this is definitely surprising you know question about that here uh, but uh, this is just really you know must be disappointing for dog he played so well and and got i mean got the first place in this group and now it's just falling short Right, we just have to be that, disappointed. Yeah, yeah. Sorry for cutting you off there. We just casted that yesterday. I mean, dog coming out of a group with Tice in it, knocking out Tice ostensibly by you know having that a good that really good record to get him out of that group, and now just out of the group altogether. The only person remaining from that group is Bra Rose. So uh, the legacy of t the Tice dog group is almost dead. We'll see if Bra Rose can maybe you know, hold the torch for Group D, but. Yeah, just, again, kind of crazy that Kalento was able to take it. We will have, I believe, what is it, Tom versus Braros next? I believe so, yeah. Uh, China right. versus Taiwan here coming up. But to talk a bit about Dog, though, I mean, he has to be thinking to himself, what if I had, you know, I had been less tired? What, what about mm -hmm. if I had gone to bed earlier or taken this more seriously? I mean, obviously, I feel like he wouldn't have won either way. Um, I don't feel like Doc, Doc threw this way by misplaying, although he didn't play perfect, but it just wasn't big enough on that. Uh, but yeah, just to talk a bit about the uh, also the uh, state of Colento. I mean, Colento has got the Rogue, the Mage, and the Shaman out his three weakest classes potentially, and he 3 0s with his weakest classes against Dog. I mean, right. who is this guy? He's looking like he might take the whole championship now. I mean, so he has Druid, he has Paladin left. He has the warrior, he has, has the priest, I mean, there's no weak classes left for Colento, and I think Eloise or life coach will be in trouble to face him here in the semifinals. Yeah, absolutely going to be something to look out for in the future. For now, we are going to a break, and when we come back, we'll have more great matches for you. Don't go away, guys.